A new study was published this week from Germany where a huge medical breakthrough has taken place with the help of technology. Scientists have managed to get ALS patients to communicate after being completely paralyzed. ALS is a motor neuron disease where patients lose all voluntary muscle-based activity and control so cannot control their limbs or move any of their body parts voluntarily or talk. In such a state, patients are described as being completely locked in where their brain functions but their motor processes don't and they're fully paralyzed and cannot communicate with the outside world at all. Now using two electrode arrays implanted in the brain of an ALS patient, scientists have managed to get him to actually form words and phrases to communicate with the people around him. The patient went from indicating a yes and no with eye movements before his disease progressed to subsequently with the machine requesting music, specific dishes to eat and asking researchers to edit and delete content. This research and experiment was performed by scientists who have been working on communication directly through the brain for a while. What has been unfortunate is that these scientists' previous studies have been contested and discredited, but the latest one, it has passed peer review colorfully. While this is a huge breakthrough in medical technology, it muddies the waters around ethics, especially around the laws pertaining to euthanasia. In this video, we'll be discussing the experiment, the findings, the scientists who performed these and the ethics questions around this latest medical technology. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, a neurodegenerative disorder where there is progressive loss of voluntary muscle function. There have been experiments in the past getting patients with ALS to communicate where patients still had the ability to move their eyes and could indicate through eye movements at least yes or no. But once the disease has progressed beyond that, there is no way to know if the patient can communicate, if their thinking is hampered as well and if their cognition is the same. No experiments before this have enabled advanced ALS patients to communicate when they are completely locked in with no sensory input as well as cognitive dysfunction. At this stage, patients are described as being in a completely locked in state or CLIS. The scientists in this experiment implanted 64 microelectrodes at two places in the brain of a 34-year-old ALS patient in CLIS and also on a ventilator. First, the patient could not communicate at all. Then the scientists decided to revise their strategy and on day 86 came up with a new one. The patient was provided auditory feedback of neural activity to enable the patient to understand how much neural processes were firing in his brain as he imagined actions that his body was making. The patient realized that the auditory feedback was controlled by his thinking, so he was then immediately able to modulate the signal. This happened on the very first day that this new technique was used. Subsequently, a few days later, the patient was able to match a target neuron firing rate and could then use this technique to start spelling out words after the 106th day of the experiment. On the first three days of spelling, the patient was spelling out the names of his wife, his son and himself correctly. On the third day, he started to form phrases, especially about his treatment. He started saying things like how his head is always kept straight, how he doesn't have a shirt but wears socks, he asked people to use more gel on his eyes and things like that. Soon, in a few days, he also started to participate socially, requesting the scientists with the equipment to come on specific evenings so that he could communicate with the visitors. He requested albums and songs that he wanted to listen to, the foods he wanted to eat, telling the scientists that the machine worked so well, asking his wife to buy a mixer to make something that he liked and hoping that he had a new bed and so on. He wasn't able to communicate on all days, the days where he was not able to match the frequencies they give him at the beginning of each session, but the scientists conducted over 5,700 trials over 462 days. The patient is still alive and well. 
These results are incredible. Although the technology of brain computer interface or BCI isn't new, it is the first time that it was used in a CLIS patient. It was first used in a patient with tetraplegia back in 2006. This patient was able to move a cursor on a computer screen using neural signals. Many other studies have followed. But with this experiment, it is also our first look into the mental and emotional state of a person in CLIS and this specific patient seems to be sound and aware. BCI research has always been the center of controversies because many people argue that quality of life is lowered and there are also pleas in many nations to liberalize laws around euthanasia. So critics think that such studies provide false hope to patients and their families where patients may be able to communicate in rudimentary sentences at some times but still not live a full life. This work actually has a lot of implications in places like Europe to work against existing euthanasia laws so ethical and regulatory approval is also a tough process. Even in this experiment, the patient consented to the experiment using eye movement. But by the time, six months later, the German authorities provided ethical review approval, his disease has progressed and he had absolutely zero voluntary muscle control. Proponents of BCI technology, of course, argue that with a caring family or in a comfortable setting, even fully paralyzed patients can actually have a considerably good quality of life. This is especially true if they communicate, they say, even if they cannot move. Additionally, they are also conscious enough to give consent to euthanasia. Of course, on the other hand, critics argue that this follows reduced cognition anyway, so it is not fully sound. The two main authors behind this paper and research are Niels Berbomer and Ujwal Chaudhary, who have worked on BCI research in the past. Their work has been controversial in the past, plagued with accusations of being non-replicable, paper retractions riddled with lawsuits, which ultimately they did go on to win. Their current work, in fact, actually builds on their previous discredited work, but this one has been accepted as being meticulous and thorough. Whether this kind of technology will work on everyone is left to be seen, but the findings provide a great deal of hope for those in completely locked-in states and with neurodegenerative diseases.